So if you're going to be towing with your Toyota Corolla, you're going to need a trailer light installed. It's the law. So let's get right to it. You're going to have four connections with your wiring. One's going to be here behind this tail light. So there's going to be here. You're also going to have a ground wire inside your trunk as well as one at your battery. You will need the tool seam here to complete this installation. Okay, so to gain access behind our tail lights, we're going to go into our trunk. All right, and we're gonna have to get behind this paneling right here. And to do so, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this floor mat. We're gonna set this off to the side. So the next step here is gonna be to remove this center panel. And to do that, you're gonna notice that we have two panel clips right here. And we're gonna be using our trim fastener tool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide it behind here. And we're just gonna wiggle it back and forth until it comes out. Okay. okay guys, now that we have these panel clips removed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull from the bottom. All right. And if you wanna take a look real quick, you see we have one, two, three connectors on each side. And these connectors fit right here into the body. All right, so now that we have this off, we're just gonna set this to the side. All right guys, so now to gain access, to the driver's side tail light, we're gonna need to remove these two fasteners that you're gonna see here. We're gonna do the same thing that we did on the middle trim. We're just gonna take our trim tool here, place it behind the fastener, and just wiggle it back and forth until it does come free. All right, once those are free, we're gonna pull this back right here and we'll be able to gain access to that driver's side tail light. So once we've pulled this back, you're gonna see that we've gained access to our driver's side tail light. This right here is where each of our fasteners went. So now that we have located our driver's side wiring connectors, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the factory fasteners from their connectors. They just did a little tab and they slide out. Okay, so once we have these slid out, you're gonna see that we have a yellow and a red and brown, okay? So the yellow one, of course, is gonna connect with the yellow one, which is gonna be the top one. You're gonna push it until you hear the click, and then you're gonna take the other side, and it's gonna push in until you hear a click as well. And we're gonna do the same thing with the red and brown connector. It's gonna push in until we hear a click. All right, now we're going to run our ground wire. Okay guys, now we're gonna run our ground wire. And we have two options here. You can either use the existing tap weld nut and find a suitable metal surface to drill in. But as you can tell, we already have an existing metal to metal connector right here. So I'm gonna be taking my 10 millimeter wrench and I'm just gonna be removing this bolt. And then we're just gonna place the ground wire on there and tighten it back up. So now that we have our ground wire ran, we're gonna take the provided self-adhesive sticky. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find a clean, suitable place for our power box. So it looks like right here on the inside is gonna be a good spot. So I'm just gonna take this and we're gonna tear it to the back and then press it down and we're gonna move over to the passenger side. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna remove the two of the trim panel fasteners right here. We're gonna pull them back and we're gonna disconnect the clips and do the same thing again. So we have the two pass panel fasteners right here. We're gonna do the same exact thing we did on the driver's side. Just wiggle them around until you get them out. Okay. Once those are removed, we're gonna pull back the trim just like we did on the other side. 
except for this time we're only going to have one set of connectors which is going to be the green so we're going to remove the bottom one all right so we're going to place it we're going to press the locking tab in so that we can remove it from its socket all right so once that's out what we're going to do is we're going to insert it to the connector so we hear the click insert the other end into the factory all right and now your connectors are done on this side we can replace the trim panel and once we have that placed back we replace our existing fat extenders back in and as you can tell they have spots that they're pre-existing for We're gonna do the exact same thing on the driver's side. So now that we're getting ready to run our power wire, um, I went ahead and moved the fastener here. And there are several different options to run the power wire. Um, there is a plug that we have found down here that you can do. Um, so that's just one of your options. But we have determined that our best option is actually gonna be um, toward the front of the vehicle. There's already a pre-existing hole with a rubber washer right here. So this is gonna be our best option. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that and we're gonna get our power wire ran through that. All right guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and make the connection for our battery wire. All right, so you wanna take the black ground wire that came from our box that we mounted earlier and then you have your black cable right here. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use the provided butt connector that came with our hardware, and it's gonna be right here. So you're gonna place one end over here, and then once you place that one end, what you wanna do is you wanna take some crimpers, and you're actually gonna press down on the metal part that's inside. And what that's gonna do is it's not only gonna connect the ground, but it's also gonna keep it firmly in place. going to do the other side as well. Make sure you have it pressed all the way inside. And you're going to press side as well. Right, now once we have our connection, crank down and everything, give it a little tug, make sure it's snug and secure. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we run it under this trim panel. Kind of just want to keep it you know out of sight out of mind and then once we have it under there we're going to go ahead and start feeding it through the existing plug hole that we found okay guys so now that we have that power wire hidden snugly behind our panel what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a slit in our rubber grommet here and the reason for this slit is to give the uh the grommet a proper seal back but allow the power cord to snugly fit through that so that we don't have any problems in the future with that okay um if not if we were to leave the plug out um it can cause issues such as water getting in here that can cause damage to the wiring as well as corroding the frame all right guys so once we have that slit cut we're going to get it back in the hole And then we are just gonna cover it with that tape that was already existingly there. Okay guys, now that we've got the power wire in and we're done under doing everything in here in the trunk, I'm just gonna replace everything and then we're gonna get started on the battery. Okay. Now we're just gonna replace Okay guys, as you can see, we came out right here in the trunk, which we determined was the best spot available. Um, it actually worked out perfectly as we are right here beside these wiring harnesses. Now I want you to take a look and you're gonna notice that our brake lines are gonna run all the way down the vehicle. This is gonna be the safest way 
to route this power wire, okay? Because we have to get it all the way up to the firewall, which is by the brake reservoir. And the manufacturer has determined that this is the best placement for the brake lines, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get started and we're just gonna route this down through here. We've now made it to the firewall, so our next step is going to be to go up to the engine compartment and fish wire down and grab our wire and pull it through. Okay guys, so we've located our battery and we've located our brake reservoir. Now right behind the brake reservoir is going to be our brake lines. So if you remember earlier, we did run our power line following our brake line. So what we're going to do now is we're going to fish wire down to be able to connect our battery wire in. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can either use a pole or you can use uh, some flexible tubing. Today I am gonna be using the flexible tubing. So what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and insert this in, and we just wanna follow that brake line down, and then we will be able to tape it up and pull it back out. All right. Okay guys, so as you can see, our fish wire came down perfectly beside our battery wire. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape the two of these together and then I'm gonna go back up top and we're gonna pull it back up. All right. All right guys, so as you see, we have our fish wire here. So we're just gonna carefully pull it up. So we're going to pull just enough slack. All right, guys. Okay guys, so now that we have the battery wire ran up through the firewall past our uh, brake reservoir, what we're going to do now is we want to ensure that this power connector looks cohesive with the plane. We wanted to make it look professional, like it belongs there, okay? So we're going to route it along here. And what we're going to do is we're going to trim the fit because we have a lot of excess left, okay? So I'm gonna make sure that I bring it over here. I'm gonna leave myself enough slack though to go connect to the battery. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it right there. Okay guys, now that we have this power wire cut to length, we're gonna do our fuse connector. We're gonna run it behind our positive battery cover. Okay. We have an eyelet. The eyelet is gonna attach right here to this side of the fuse. Then we're gonna attach it right here. We're gonna use a 12 millimeter socket. And then we're gonna take our provided connector. We're gonna do just like you see me do on the other end of the wiring, okay?
here. Okay guys, so the last thing to do is to place in the divided 10 amp fuse right here. Just gonna push that all the way in. Once it's pushed in, you will replace the cover. The dust cover to keep out the brain and moisture in it. And so now once we're done, we just want to make sure that we clean up everything. Make sure everything looks nice, neat, and professional. And you're good to go. You're all powered up. Alright guys. So as we're gonna clean up from front to back, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take some zip ties and we are gonna secure our um, wiring from front to back. It is best to use as many of these as possible. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna ensure that your power wire doesn't fall and doesn't touch anything hot or anything like that. So always definitely keep some of these handy. Um, and yeah, you can just go from there. All right guys, so when you get ready to tow a trailer, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift up your cargo mat here and you're gonna retrieve your wiring from its stowed position right here beside your spare tire. As you can notice, you do have the floor flat. So what we're gonna do is it's gonna drape right across your seal right here. And we're gonna go ahead and shut the trunk. All right, then you'll be able to connect your trailer right to it. So. Once you open your trunk back up, I'm gonna show you right here on the wiring that there's no damage. It's safe to shut the trunk on this. You just don't wanna put it over here because it can cause damage, okay guys? So once you're done, you're gonna roll it up. You're gonna lift this cargo mat back up and you're gonna put it back in its stored position beside your spare tire. Thanks for watching our video guys. Be safe and enjoy the outdoors. To learn more about the products seen in this video or to schedule an installation by U-Haul Hitch Professional, visit us online today at uhaulhitches.com.